Hello my friends, in my second video we will explore how we handle our specimen prior to the shooting. Let's jump ahead. My appreciation to all of you my friends, here I come with my second and most important I think video of the introductory series. In this one I'll talk about the procedure and the main components that are used to handle and manipulate our subject. The act of killing a living creature is in all its means and aspects an awful and censurable one. If that makes any difference to you estimating the total population of the insects in the planet is a very hard and tricky task to do because of the large amount of them. Nevertheless from the beginning I decided to find the quickest method to perform the all procedure. I have found that the quickest and the most lethal chemical is the one that is used as a thinner in the varnish which is used in the wooden floors. During the pass of time I discovered that entomological tubes and the chopped in small pieces corp which help the nitro thinner to evaporate faster that way does its job as soon as possible. Many chemicals are referred to be used in order to kill insects in the beginning I used acetone but ever since I found the nitro thinner I only use that. On a spider in my first steps an antifreeze liquid did my job but it seemed to apply only in a minority of insects. Since that thinner I use is definitely decolorize some insects I intend when that will happen to use ethanic ethyl ester. If you have any other suggestions let me know in the comments below. If your specimen is too big for that tube you must use a killing jar, a glass jar proportional to the size of your insect and the bottom of it we place wet paper with your killing agent. The insects tend to hide inside that paper that way they die sooner. After we eliminate our insect and confirm that, we are starting the process of cleaning it. We have to keep in mind that insects by themselves always tend to clean their body, but even the unnoticeable bits of dirt such as little bits of any kind of speck while they are magnified they create a problem in the eye. Containers that are used in the all process till that moment must be washed, if you are afraid of the asphyxiation of the captured insect you can always pin the container with a small needle. For feeding them we can put a very little amount of sugar. In the cleaning process we can use various solutions of solvents with distilled water it is suggested first to wash them with a warm solution of a common kitchen detergent and water always distilled. Common solvents are acetone, benzene, alcohol, and other. We are facing each insect separately. Mainly depending on its color, we use milder solutions on colored ones the general proposal is to use a 30% solution of a chemical in distilled water. In this point I must alert the attention of the user of such chemicals as they are all toxic and flammable. In the end we must always don't forget to dry our subject, we are usually doing that with a hair dryer. The next step is to properly pin our object. We must not forget that from now on, it is at its cleanest state, thus all the following procedures in neither case should cause any kind of pollution on it. We should have a clean and steady surface on which we would place it and we would pin it. In the case where it is a juicy one we take care to pin it in a place of its body that would be free of fluids such as its thorax, as the moist parts of the insect body tend to be on the third, the opposite side of the head of it. In the variety though of them, not all of the bugs have the same allocation of the fluids in their bodies, in cases of insects that do not follow the main pattern we adjust accordingly. We have to weigh it according to the exact direction it will take when pinned, depending on what we wish to photograph. Even consider to remove a part of its body, if the weight of it causes the object to spin in a way that is not comfortable to manipulate it, in order to take the wished photography. This is the main procedure one microphotographer has to do and to do it well. It mainly is made of combining several pictures together with slightly different focus points and then combining all of them together to take the final image. As the purpose of that introductory series is only to attach the surface of the procedures I will show only the basics of it. All procedure will certainly be the object of a separate video in the future. After we follow the previous steps we perform the focus stacking with the aid of our favorite stacking mechanism. This can be done manually or mechanically. For our convenience, we prefer the second way. After that, 
we use some photo manipulation program to achieve our final result. And this, my friend, was the end of my introduction. I hope by visiting my videos to give me the urge to make more of them and to describe you in more details the or procedure and to show you how the work is done.